Welcome back. We are joined once again by Congressman Ted Deutsch, a Democrat who represents parts of Broward and Palm Beach counties. Congressman, we were yeah. talking just before the break about uh, immigration a little bit and, and Ken Cuccinelli's comments. And let me just again remind folks what Ken Cuccinelli recently said. He apparently wants to rewrite the inscription at the base of the Statue of Liberty saying it should read, give me your tired and your poor who can stand on their own two feet and it will not become a public charge. He went on in further comments to clarify, saying that really what he's referring to is Europeans, that he was encouraging more about Europeans coming to, uh, to the United States, and it seemed to exclude people who have color, brown, or black-skinned people coming into the country. When you heard what Ken Cuccinelli said, what was your thought? Um, the, the fact that a senior administration official has determined that the Statue of Liberty uh, is sending a message of hope and a, a welcoming hand to people coming from from places around the world that in fact she's really only offering that hand to able-bodied Europeans uh, is it's offensive it's so contrary to who we are as a country it shows sat such a lack of understanding I don't know where Ken Cuccinelli's family came from uh, or what their condition was when they came here but my grandfather, who had a push cart at the, the market in Chicago, selling produce, pushing his cart around every single day, he came to this country. He did come from Europe, but he also came here with no prospects. He fled. He came. He had no prospects for success. And under Ken Cuccinelli's interpretation of what we ought to be doing going forward and what this administration is trying to do, whether wherever you come from, but especially if you are coming from the South and you are, you are brown and not a white European, uh, if you can't show that you're going to be a great contributor, you have no place here. And it misses, but here's what it misses. In South Florida, we know this better than anyone. Our vibrant community has been built by immigrants, so many of whom came here fleeing terrible conditions to this country because of what, it's, what it offers, and they built themselves up and, and they contributed, they built their families, they helped build our community. He doesn't get it, and it's, it's sad, and it's unfortunate, and it's offensive. And that that's, was the point I was going to make there as well, is that, is that there's an assumption in the comment that those who come from uh, Latin America, for instance, are coming here just to sort of be dependent on the public dole for somehow and aren't willing to work. I mean, what, what captured my attention most about the raids in Mississippi is you were rounding up people and you started hearing the stories of those who were rounded up. Yes, they had been come into the country without the proper documentation, but they had been working here for 10 years, paying taxes, raising a family, sending their kids to schools, and getting up every morning and doing the work that a lot of people do not want to do. Working in, yeah. working in a chicken processing plan, I can guarantee anyone is not pleasant work and is not nice labor. Right. People who have been contributing to our country, uh, as you point out, so often doing anything, taking any job they can to help themselves and to help their family. And, and yet, Ken Cuccinelli and this administration, starting with the president, who I mean, let's let's remember his very first speech. Let's think about the way he's talked about immigrants as as rapists. I mean, th this is um, this has been consistent from the start. I am I'm shocked by what Ken Cuccinelli says. I'm particularly uh, dismayed by the utter silence from so many of my Republican colleagues, and frankly, from Republican members of the Senate who know what our community is. Know know that immigrants have helped build our community and yet seem only too willing to allow this president to demonize the very people that we are so proud to represent. Is that a direct uh, shot or an indirect shot at Marco Rubio? It sounds as if you were talking about the senator from South Florida, or the senator who represents Florida whose parents came from Cuba. This, the senator from, from South Florida understands the, exactly that community that I described that we both represent. All right. We, I do want to try to move through a couple other subjects sure. real quickly. Uh, Homestead, the Homestead Detention Center uh, closed but didn't really close. We're look, hearing reports that they may start bringing children back uh, to that facility in October once hurricane season ends. Would that be a good idea? No. 
No, it's not a good idea. We've I've visited Homestead a couple of times, and and we've asked questions. I've asked questions at, at multiple hearings on the Judiciary Committee with uh, with government officials about about what happens at Homestead, the contract that they have, the private contract, the subcontracts with, among others, those who's, who come in to provide training on, on sexual abuse prevention. Um, we know the kinds of reports that have come out of Homestead and other facilities. Uh, what we don't know because the, the government, the administration has been unwilling, they just haven't been forthcoming and sharing this information, is what happens in all of these instances where complaints are filed. It, it seems almost as if the decision to, to cause a break uh, will, will cause people to forget about everything that happened at Homestead uh, before it was emptied out so that they can start fresh. Uh, Homestead is a facility that is, because it's private and because it's run by the federal government, is not subject to all of the laws at the state level and the local level that are there to protect children. That's a problem. The issue of what takes place inside there is still something right. we're interested in. I'm going to be pursuing, and we'll, I'm sure we'll be talking to you more about that. I want to cover a couple other things real quickly. Um, as you do represent parts of Palm Beach County, my question to you is, should Governor Ron DeSantis remove Sheriff Rick Bradshaw, given his handling of the Epstein case? The governor has certainly shown a willingness to remove yeah, the, sheriffs who do more work in the past. Uh, the, the, the governor has shown a willingness to use his his power uh, to advance his political interests. Uh, obviously, there is an investigation into what happened. Sheriff Bradshaw has, uh, has, has recognized that it's important to figure out what happened there. Uh, this is all happening at the same time that uh, that we're now, the Judiciary Committee, is now focused on, on what happened in that prison in New York and how it is that Epstein was left alone and was able to take his own life. The one thing that we all agree, I, I would think, I hope, the one thing that we all agree with is that for Epstein's victims, uh, that this is not the end of the road, that there is going to be an ongoing investigation. Uh, they deserve justice, whether Epstein is there to face it directly or not. We're taping this on a Thursday morning in full disclosure. Uh, there is an issue that's arisen now with regard to whether or not Israel will allow two sitting members of Congress, Representatives Ilan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, uh, to, uh, to enter Israel so they can visit different parts of, I believe, the West Bank and, and different parts of Israel. Do you think that Israel, do, well, what would you advise Israel to do when it comes yeah. to blocking sitting members of Congress from entering the country? You know, I think members of Congress should be able to visit. Uh, there's no, I, I think there's, there's no question that my views of, of Israel differ from Representative Omar and Representative Tlaib. I support a two-state solution uh, and vehemently opposed to BDS. That said, I just got back from Israel. I was with 40 other Democratic members of the House who had an opportunity to visit not just with the prime minister and his chief rival in the upcoming elections, but with the Palestinian president and prime minister, with Palestinian, uh, young Palestinian uh, entrepreneurs. We met with civil society. We met with people from the LGBT community, the Ethiopian community, the Druze community. That's what my colleagues need to see. That's, I, I think, what informs the support that Israel enjoys across the political spectrum in the United States. Um, so I, I hope that they're allowed to go, whether they choose to have those meetings, um, that's a separate issue, and I, I hope that they would. Uh, but I saw what happens when a large group of Democrats have the chance to see what's happening in Israel, to visit the, the borders of, in, with Syria and with Lebanon and in the south to see the security threats. It's complicated, but it's a vibrant, uh, vibrant democracy that we support. Um, it, it's easier to support okay. when you see it up close. All right. Well, look at that. See, I said we had a half an hour. We're already out of time. In the last 15 seconds, all right, do you want to make an endorsement for president on the Democratic Party side? Uh, I, it's very thoughtful. <laughs> uh, I need more than 15 seconds, but if you have me back, maybe we can do a show. Uh, I, have you, you haven't endorsed, though, have I've you? Not, I've not endorsed yet. The one thing that I've endorsed is that the country is going to be much better off without Donald Trump as president, and that's what we're all working toward in 2020. Congressman Ted Deutsch, as always, I thank you for your time.